Real Clear Politics White House correspondent. Good to see you, uh, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Uh, all right. Uh, it seems as though it's, is it too early, I guess would be the right way to say, to call this a civil war inside the Republican Party? <laughs> Well, we've been talking about civil wars for so long that I think we might have to come up with a new term. I think the closest thing that we can get to that is that President Trump is continuing a will he, won't he routine. We don't know if he is going to run for president. Certainly, he has a big pile of cash. He's got the support of uh, base conservatives. Uh, but standard operating procedure for any Republican with their own White House ambitions has to be at this point to assume that he's going to run again in 2024. You obviously have some great sources who you talked to down at Mar-a-Lago who heard this. How much of this was a cry for relevancy by the former president? Yeah, it's a fair question. Uh, president Trump was down there talking to uh, the think tank America First Policy Institute, which is uh, the brain trust of some of his former uh, top aides and advisors. I think some of this was plain to the crowd, certainly. Uh, this is a former president who, who loves to be braggadocious. At the same time, uh, Trump saw what happened in Virginia, and he reads that as vindication for his sort of culture war arguments. He thinks that he lost... Uh, you know, lost the, the last presidential election, you know, unfairly in his mind. Uh, but his thought here is, look, Republicans are finally taking the playbook that I told them to advance and look at Biden's uh, approval numbers. I could totally beat that guy. That's uh, at least what's going on in his mind right now. Yeah, it was described to me as someone who knows the former president really well, uh, MAGA without the crazy, which is what was in, embraced mm -hmm. in uh, Virginia. Uh, this is also what the president had to say, not uh, your reporting uh, Trump rebukes Chris Christie for saying GOP needs to move on. Everybody remembers that Chris left New Jersey with less than a 9% approval rating, a record low, and Republicans didn't want to hear this from him. Uh, it brings up a really interesting point, uh, at least for Democrats that I talk to, almost think that they can goad President Trump into saying things that will be inflammatory, that will then help them and provide the foil that Terry McAuliffe didn't have in Virginia. Absolutely. Uh, if we learned anything from Virginia, it's that Democrats really like running against Donald Trump. And in fact, uh, they might have overreached when they tried to paint Glenn Youngkin as a Trump-like person who's just taller and wears a fleece vest. It clearly didn't win there. You were able to have uh, Youngkin make sort of some of these conservative populist arguments about education and other things without the, the populist baggage that Trump brings along. But uh, if the former president decides, uh, like he has, has hinted at, that he's going to get back in the race, well, then all of those former ads that, that Democrats cut over the last four years, all of the, the, the fears that they sort of stoked about his return, well, they just have to dust those off and run them again during the midterms. Yeah, especially if he's trying to make a return in the media, which the media would love covering him because it gives us uh, something to talk about every day. Uh, back to this fight now, uh, you might even call it perpetual conflict inside uh, the Republican Party. Here's Senator Haggerty about those 13 Republicans. Take a listen. It was very surprising to me to see 13 Republicans basically bail Nancy Pelosi out. She did not have the votes within her own party to do this. I think what they did was put themselves on a path to early retirement. President Trump has proven to be so-so in his record in general elections. In primaries, he is quite effective. Uh, Adam Kinzinger is retiring. A couple of these folks, though, are not. Uh, how worried are they about primary challenges? Yeah, they're very worried. We're going to see what the uh, National Republican Congressional Committee does to these folks for balking party leadership. But you've got to expect that some of these outside conservative groups like the Heritage Foundations, uh, you know, the Heritage Action, uh, excuse me, or Club for Growth or, or others are going to try and hold these guys accountable. And what we heard from, from Haggerty um, and, and from, you know, other conservatives like uh, Senator Ted Cruz is those guys, uh, th they are making the argument that by crossing uh, uh, party lines, balking leadership, that by voting for the infrastructure package that those Republicans gave Biden a win, a win and, and helped him keep uh, mm. the, the reconciliation package alive. So if, if you're, you know, an outside conservative group, uh, those guys are, are, you know, at, at the top of your uh, at the top of your list to go after. Yeah, and certainly the uh, attack ads certainly write themselves. Um, so <laughs> we're going to see that we're going to see that 
full screen of uh, Republicans who voted for it a number of times uh, over the next 12 months. Phil, good to see you as always, my friend. Coming up, Thank you, sir. we're going to speak to a vaccinated teacher speaking out. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.